must be a big boat. It's got its own tanker to fill it up. Oh yeah, a beast. There's a delta. Richard needs some scallops. Come the birds. Territorial, it's Jeff's bird. That's where he stands. There he goes. No dive flag off or anything yet. Better get that up as well. There we go. Get the ladder in as well. No. Get your gear on. Gear on. Okay. Welcome back to Bailiwick again to Shipwrecks. I'm JP Fallais and today you're going to be joining me on a little scallop dive. We tend to start off by doing our deepest dive first in diving. So this is a 30 meter dive. I think I see about 32 meter max. So this is quite a nice depth really. This is right on the edge of the advanced diver certificate. As you can see with a bit of sea bear where they're actually all quite small here. Yeah, that's not wide enough. It's gotta be wider than my four fingers really to be for me to put it back in my bag. This one looks slightly better. There's currently probably one knot of tide running south. Um, you can kind of see it in the silt a little bit. Here we go, some bit of a modern tap that's been thrown over the side of a boat. Looks like a, maybe a Disney mug or some sort. 
Can imagine a fisherman on the back of their boat having a drink and putting that on the gunnel, going over a wave and then losing it. There's also plenty more of this modern rubbish. Um, it's a home for something. I see little fish lay eggs inside these, so I tend to leave them. Plenty of rubbish this close to the harbour. You can see old tyres and bits of rope, old mooring, mooring ropes and um, crab pot ropes. So people have just basically come out the harbour. This is a shred of a tyre which they normally wrap around a crab pot uh, for protection. Still, very small scallops. quick five minute um, air check so I'm 31 meters I got eight minutes bottom time left and something seems to be pulling my line uh, could be wrapped around the boat or something but I'll carry on it seems to have let go now or oh, is this a shanker called brown edible crab not quite sure this is alive seems to be mm, no that's just an empty shell it's obviously dead all oh, some decent decent ones now that's what we're talking about As you can see the viz is absolutely stunning still. We had a bit of a bad patch but we still got a little bit of this snot in the water. It's not too bad. I find out that well, I find a lot of scallops around this rope stuff. So I'm not sure if they sort of swim up and then find it gives them a bit of protection or the fact is they've swum up and it's hit the rope and then just stopped. But I tend to find scallops in and in around these bits of rope. certainly hard going around in the seabed it just doesn't seem to be many at all turn my lights off so you can have a little bit of a view of what it normally looks like I know where I am now um, normally the scallops pick up around here so this is a trench it's probably about eight foot wide maybe four foot deep this is where one of the old power cables uh, has been trenched into the seabed, just along here. Uh, you know when you're in it because you find hundreds of really old shells. Um, different types, like razor clams, venus clams, all that sort of stuff. Loads of old dead scallop shells. This is the, uh, the newer cable uh, route, so it's not as bad as the, the next one we're going to swim across. But now I know that um, I've come over this, I know roughly where I am on the seabed now. So this is a cable that came out from Havlet and then down to Jersey and then across to France. As you see there you see a little puff of sand that comes out normally when the scallops see you they um, they give away their hiding spaces sometimes and they puff a bit of sand out which you end up seeing uh, it's a good indicator that the scallops are so I'm down to about 80 bar now on my air and I've got four minutes no decompression limit left so I can stay down for another four minutes before I go into deco I tend not to like going into deco to be honest um, just takes longer to go up and you waste waste too much air 
Uh, plus I want to do another dive. Here we go, there's another scallop in between this. This is an old tangle net by the looks of it, so I'm a bit dubious about getting, getting close to it. Um, if I got tangled in this, uh, potentially it would hold me down as an anchor onto the seabed, um, especially if it went, you know, it tangled probably through my valve pillar or something like that. So I tend to stay well away from these sort of things. It's a big, big starfish under there. minutes left and there's seven minutes to total time to surface so I better get ready to go there's not as many spider crabs as I was expecting this year it seems to be very low on the spider crab numbers we haven't seen any of the large bulls of the males or the females. Never noticed this to happen before. It went from 50 bar to 40 bar in probably one second. That's not too good, especially if you think you got more there than you have. Just while I'm doing my safety stuff, and I'm right next to the surface. Also, we carry a pony bottle just for that case, in case we run out of air. So this week has finally happened. Uh, the sea temperature has gone from 12 to 13 degrees. And we're seeing a lot of these jellyfish now starting. Also the um, the sea gooseberries are starting to come out now. All the hydroid medusas. So look at it, it's collecting all this silty stuff out the out the sea. Making off is better for us. I can actually get stung by these. What they tend to do is they tend to put their tentacles across your um, your mask if you're not careful, and you end up getting stings on the top of your lips. Not too nice to be honest. Here's a little sea gooseberry. When you touch these little things, they've normally got two brown sort of tentacles that come off the bottom. As soon as you touch them, they almost seem to shoot off as if they're like trying to. Um, feel like they've got a fish or something and they shoot off their little tentacles and they and ten, end up losing them. But there's loads around here now. I've given my buff the free jiggles um, so they know I'm about to come up. You can even see people walking around on the boat. I love it when the visit is like this. And there's even more sea gooseberries. Don't be fooled with these jellyfish, they are pretty quick when they want to be. How many's he got? I wonder. So Matt's got 50. Yeah, it's not bad. Slightly better than my bag. What is your bag? Are you getting dragged, Matt? Yeah. What's that clapping noise? Yeah, 
Yeah, I've got a few smalls. 52 and a flatty. 52 and a flatty. Oh, let's have a look at your flatty. That's a nice flat fish. Not a bad one. Oh. Yeah, not bad at all, that. Not bad. <laughs> Go for soul. I'll wind Lee up with it later. <laughs> I sense that's going to get sent to one of our, our mates that dive on the boat as well. Because there's a few here, obviously. Don't know what happened to my bag. I'm not sure what happened to mine. There's a hole in it. There's a hole in it, yeah, look. With Richard and Jeffrey, that's how many fall out their suit when they get back on the boat. Since we're about to see that no, again. Richard packs him in there. So basically, once he's left his uh, left that bag on the bottom, you come up the rope. Richard, as he's going along the seabed, he's picking them up again. He's jamming them up inside his suit. Hopefully, we see a demonstration very shortly. I'll put my highly technical gear on. Yeah, do you need a hand with that? No, no. A <laughs> bottle, two straps and a diving regulator. Any, any reason we got a scallop in the wheelhouse? You don't even use a bloody no. job. There's a migrating scallop, that one. Oh, that was on the boat on the floor. On the deck, I should say, not the floor. And here he goes. <laughs> not particularly good, is it? There's none that are uh, undersized by the looks of how that one is. That's under 100 mil, look. And put it on your ends. That's a problem with your eyesight, I'll get them counted. I'm guessing 25. How many's Jeff got, though? 26. 26 dozen. That's what you catch when you do it on the tank. I know. That's what you catch when you haven't got your camera on. I wish. <laughs> That's like a trawl net off of a uh, off a boat. That thing. He needs it though. Thin size. This is worn out as well, there's so many scopes that go on through it. On the side. <laughs> that wasn't mine, that was Jess, honestly. <laughs> he just chucked that in my pile. <laughs> 24. Twenty-four. Yeah, one short. I guess about 180 for Jeff. 113? Yeah, that's good. Oh, 114, that's good. And they're either. You can see, look, that's the only sort of smallish stuff I got. Yeah, you've done very well. Compared to me. It's a little bit misty today. It's not the lens that's fucked up, it is actually a little bit misty. Weird old knees, they're like bend backwards on myself. Give us a shout, go on. Make a noise. Go on. Big, big noise. Keeney's now back up. Let's have a look at his catch. Oh, yeah, decent amount. Another 100 plus for sure. We're going to get ready for our next dive. Back 
into the wind. Ah, it's happened again. I've gone over the side and my lift bag has actually unraveled itself where I've hit the gunnel. Oh well, I'll just take it apart and put it inside my bag. I could roll it back up on the seatbelt, it's a nightmare. Plus there's loads of scallops here, so I've got to collect all these. There's loads of them. But the thing is, I've noticed there's some shipwreck coming up. Um, I'm not going to hit it in a minute with my bag. And the tide is still going south quite strongly. This is some chunks of the Beaufort um, shipwreck which was hit by Agenor and then was dried outside the harbour. Basically they couldn't lift it again because it was stuck in the sand so they blew it apart and they've dragged it all the way down here into deeper water so it's no longer an issue to shipping, especially where people anchor outside the harbour. These bits of metal are normally home to a lot of different species. You know, it's one side's bare, but the other side, which isn't in the tide so much, it's got a, the soft corals on. And the wrasse, you always get a decent wrasse here. Also gobies, there's a couple under here. Cold. That could have been some of the cargo from the boat because it was carrying cold. Where is the elusive lobster? There's got to be a lobster around here somewhere. Possibly down this hole? No. Just got to look out for the little red antennae. That's a, uh, always a giveaway. They've always got their red antennae out. Oh, what's this? It's like some sort of pinky collared nudibranch hanging on the side of the shipwreck just here. Just right there. Spot it, a little red antennae. carry on and look for some more scallops. I can't wait around there all day filming. I mean, I want to take some home with me today, so I've got to get enough. Otherwise I'll feel bad if I don't get enough. I'm definitely going to leave some for the boat. Ah, there's a shark. These things really do look like aliens, especially adapted to what they're doing, walking around the seabed scavenging. So we're currently in the second trench which is the older trench for the power cable and you can see here, there's a lot of debris, there's old crab pots that have been crushed but check how many old shells are in the bottom of here, all different types. There's oyster shells, there's all sorts, razor clams, scallop shells, 
oysters, probably thousands of years worth of shells. Not quite sure how these manage to stay here though, whenever else they sort of get eaten or, or turn to sand. Might just because they're in this divot. There is scallops in here though, not this one. The sand inside this trench is a bit different to the rest, it's very sort of very silty and um, sticky when you put your fingers into it. Check out this little trail of shells. If you notice the, the top and bottom are still connected, they're still hinged together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A little trail of them. Actually quite a few. These have been opened by starfish. Um, that's normally a telltale sign because if a, if a diver was to shock the scallops it would um, pull the shells apart baby cuttlefish. These are starting to come in now as well. I love these things. If you follow these fish, these fish take you back to wreckage. Um, not quite sure why they do it. They're probably heading back to a little bit of security so I tend to follow them. But in this case I'm uh, heading back down the trench again and also heading into deep water. There's more of these shells that have been opened by starfish. Actually, there's a crazy amount of them. I'll let the fish swim off. I'm not going to follow them. But we're back in the trench yet again. All these look like they're uh, proper scallops, but they're all empty. There's a discarded pot, probably lost or maybe damaged, and someone's just thrown it over the side. Uh, normally open the back of the doors to these things just to see if there's anything inside and let it out. Sometimes you're locking a lobster's living in there and you get a feed but not in this case. Check out this, this is a proper camo crab this one. It's called a sea toad and I'm going to be very careful with it because it uses other sea life to camouflage itself but you can only really appreciate it when it's in your hand to have a look at it. It's also known as a great um, spider crab as well and it's got like a pear shaped carapace. Grows to about 100 millimeters long, but look at it. It's covered in marine life. Really cool. I'll put it back. There we go. As I'm going past this uh, sugar cap, I notice there's two little fish actually going for gold in the tide here. Look, when if you look really closely, they're baby pelt, or uh, I think a lot of people call them bib. But they are going to get tired pretty quick trying to swim against a tide like that. They're going for gold. tide doesn't look that bad but it's actually trying to rip me away as, and I'm holding on for my dear life as I'm getting pulled away in the tide. So I found this, this is a uh, hermit crab and all this stuff on it is coralline algae which is on the shell and it's using like a dog whelk shell. I've put them down upside down because they always tip themselves back over. Another shoal of these small fish. I turn my lights off because they don't tend to like the um, the brightness of my lights. I'll follow them, see which way they take me. Not quite sure what even type of fish they are. Uh, it's actually fairly rare to be able to see like a little uh, shoal of fish like this. I mean, it's not often I see them, and I'm diving all the time. Ah, uh, this is what I've been looking for. A nice big spider crab. Um, this one's very active. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get them in my bag without getting pinched. Might have to put the camera down. 
I think he's got good reach. He can go right behind the back of his shell and get me. You've got to basically roll him onto their back, tickle their stomach so they go. They bring their legs into the centre, put his back in the middle of the hole of my bag and push him in as fast as I can without him pinching. Nine times out of ten they end up pinching me you though. Know. Get in. Four minutes left, so I'm gonna have to start heading up soon. I've actually got another spider crab in my bag as well, but um, I think I'm gonna chuck one back. It's probably inside, but I'm gonna chuck it back, so I only really want one. It's for my dad. Get this red leg out of here. Massive, what do you do? Go with my Dover Soul that Max called me. Eight. Eight. And that one is. Uh, uh, looks, looks a bit small. Uh, looks 25% bigger. Yeah, 25% bigger. Oh, he's pinching. He's pinching. Ow, ow, ow. Look down. Good job. He's on my suit. And then baby's gonna get, get these sorted quick before we get to harbour. Beautiful. Ah, uh, 36. Oh, 36. Not bad? Not bad at all. Awesome days diving, or awesome mornings diving. A few crates of skull up there. I mean, they're not the biggest of them, but they uh, certainly taste just as good. It's Matt's Dover sole. The colorations on there, awesome. The Jeff's just had one. A bit sandier. Really they're different than they are. And I've got a red leg for lunch. Or I should say tea really. There's another box below there. Keeney's <sighs> looking at what to do. Well, actually, we can shuck a couple for me today. Anyway, hang on. Not actually that cold. It's just like northeasterly winds, a bit chilly. <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming along. Anyway, thanks for coming along and joining us over the uh, over the shoulder there, looking at that dive. I enjoyed that. Thanks for taking us out, Richard. Okay, my pleasure. Is it alright if I take a couple today? Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you. Yeah.